Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
be with you. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The reading is from Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company shall they return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the west coastlands far away, saying, He who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from the hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud in the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. They, their lives shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young woman rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into, into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty. So says the Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts! My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her ha a house, and the swallow a nest, where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house, they will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room, and to stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. O Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. 
He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of this glorious grace that he freely bestowed upon us the beloved, in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Now, I am guessing that the story I just read is not unfamiliar to many of you. It's definitely part of the canon of Christmas and Epiphany stories that we get each year, and it's surrounded by a tremendous amount of pageantry and pomp. I mean, who doesn't love singing We Three Kings of Orient Are, or seeing children or adults dressed up as the Magi, as the wise men, bringing gifts to Jesus as part of the Christmas pageant. But I would suggest that in the middle of all this pageantry, we sometimes lose a little bit of the poignancy, even the scandal of this story. And it really is a scandalous one. These were wise men from the East. It's quite obvious by what the text implies that these were not Jews. They referred to Jews as an outsider would, in fact. When they came to King Herod, they said, where is this child who has been born king of the Jews? So these were Gentiles from another country. And then when they arrived at the place where Jesus lay and encountered Mary and presumably Joseph, they were received, apparently, as honored guests, and their gifts were gladly accepted. Now, to give you a comparison for what that might be like now, imagine that you or I just decided to hop on a plane for someplace like Iran or Saudi Arabia, saying that we had a message for the king, and without any fanfare or any introduction, showed up and expected to be heard and received as honored guests. That's a little bit of a stretch of the imagination. And yet here, this is exactly what happened with these wise men. We don't even know for sure that they were three. We know they brought three gifts. Let's juxtapose that with what we tend to do in just about every human society. It's a completely understandable tendency. We are looking for reason. We're looking for order. We're looking for things to make sense and in a way that is not always challenging and confusing. So in doing so, we very quickly, whenever we have the luxury of doing it, set up unspoken rules, sometimes they're even spoken or written rules, about who's in and who's out, which ideas are in, which ideas are out. Right now, for example, in the secular world, 
it's very much in vogue to brand a lot of things with the terms misinformation and disinformation. It's a very quick way of saying that this particular piece of thought of ideology and probably the person who brought it to you is outside the realm of what we accept and we're going to dismiss it out of hand without giving it a further hearing. Now I realize there really is such a thing as misinformation and disinformation, but I do believe that we are grossly overusing these terms and more importantly overusing what these terms do to people and ideas right now. Now in the church we tend to be a little more genteel about it, you know, rather than using <clears throat> such clinical terms as misinformation and disinformation, we've come up with things like apostasy, heterodoxy, but to a large extent they boil down to the same thing. These are propositions, ideas, that we declare right from the start to be outside of the acceptable, outside of the accepted, outside of what we're willing to entertain and chew on in our life as a church. And so we basically pronounce condemnation on the ideas and to a certain extent on the people who bring them to us. Now, I have to admit that the Episcopal Church deserves a certain amount of credit for not always falling into this trap. One, idea, one place in recent history where we've done that quite well was in the 1980s when the AIDS crisis hit San Francisco and so many other communities and a cry went up from the LGBTQ community straight at the church, saying, are we not also beloved children of God, deserving of inclusion in this sacred community of the faithful, especially at this time when we so need a sacred space in which to lament and mourn our dead and process our own fear around what's happening and what how little we know about it. And to our credit, the Episcopal Church, in this region at least, heard that cry, and we adapted our teachings, our behaviors, our understandings, our words in response to that cry. But overall, human societies writ large have a lot of difficulty doing that, and yet this is exactly what happened with the visit of the Magi. When they came to Herod, they were making a profoundly theological statement. They were saying, we observed the rise of Jacob's star. They may not have even known the scriptures that prophesied such a thing, but we observed the rise of this wild star that we know to interpret as the token, the harbinger of the birth of the Messiah, the King of the Jews. Now, seeing as large chunks of the Old Testament our prophecies and explications on this event, this anticipated event, what a wild and bold and profound theological statement these magi were making. And therefore, what a wild, bold, and profound act on the part of Mary and Joseph it was to accept them and to accept the message that they brought. Imagine what would have become or more accurately, what would not have become of the Jesus movement if the statements that the Magi made and their gifts were branded as heterodoxy, apostasy, misinformation, disinformation, and they and their gifts and their ideas had been dismissed without a fair hearing. But they weren't. And for that very reason, we even have a Jesus movement a Christianity, a church, and all of the hope and the joy and the community that goes with that. So that brings me to today. We enter 2021 as a world desperately clawing for and needing healing and reconciliation and rebuilding. That's true of us as a small little community, and it's obviously true of the global community all around us. And that global community is going to look throughout this year anywhere and everywhere it can think of to find the healing and the meaning building and the reconciliation that it needs. 
one of the places that it's going to look is to the church. But when it looks to the church, it is inevitably going to do something that is likely going to make us very uncomfortable. It's going to bring people to us, and it's going to bring ideas to us that if we're not careful, we're going to immediately label as heterodox, as apostate, as something that's outside the boundaries of what we've historically accepted and even what we're willing to accept right now. But if we look at this luminous story in the second chapter of Matthew of these magi who made the difficult and dangerous desert journey, following the star, knowing better than the people who had received these prophecies for centuries and millennia what the star meant, and then who were accepted at least by the key players in this burgeoning Jesus movement, we have a pattern for what we might need to do in this year and in the years to come. I believe that we as a church are about to be visited by wise men, wise women, not necessarily from the East, but from outside of our tribal boundaries. And they're going to be coming to the church looking for something, but they're also going to be coming to the church bringing something. We need to be ready to be open, to be vulnerable, of course, to be discerning in what we are willing to accept, what gifts we're willing to accept, what ideas we're willing to embrace. We are looking in this soon-to-be post-COVID reality at a world that is not going to be recognizable in a lot of ways compared to the one we knew beforehand. And so it is a ripe time, just like it was a ripe time in first century Judea, for us to receive new people, new ideas, and be willing for the church to change, not for change's sake, but because it is what God is doing right now in this difficult and liminal space. So, my friends, as we launch into 2021, I just invite you to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest this incredible story of the Magi Take it at face value. Let its wonder and its scandal hit you full force. And then ask yourself the question, as this year unfolds, and as we move into a reality of a world that has just experienced this debilitating pandemic and all of the other unsettling events that 2020 brought us, and as that world marches forward in time, and comes to any place, especially the church, where it thinks it can find healing and reconciliation and meaning. How are we going to receive that world? How are we going to welcome that world? What new things and new people and new gifts are we going to be ex willing to accept that perhaps we've never accepted before? I'm not saying we need to do it with everything. Discernment is always called for, but I can guarantee you that God is going to send us some things that seem strange and new, but just like that historic visit of the Magi, are exactly what the church needs in this time and place. We join together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. For him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, 
the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With boundless joy in the mystery of the Incarnation, let us pray, saying, O Word made flesh, hear our prayer. O God, who became flesh and dwelt among us, you call your people to unite in worship, that we might receive power to become your children, divine beings in whom your Word has hands and feet. Pour out your blessing upon the church throughout the world that gathers for this purpose. Send this blessing especially today upon the Anglican Communion, including Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, and the Anglican province of Alexandria. Pour out your spirit also upon the Episcopal Church and our diocese, including Michael, our presiding bishop, Mark, our bishop, St. John's Church in Ross and St. John's Church in Clayton. Let your blessings also come to Valley Baptist Church in Livermore. O Word made flesh, hear our prayer. O God, in whom mercy and justice embrace, we ask for your love to take wings in all the nations and peoples of the world. Bend the hearts of all nations and peoples toward peace and righteousness. Send your spirit, especially upon Donald, our president, Joe, our president-elect, Gavin, our governor, John, our retiring mayor, Bob, our newly elected mayor, and all who serve in legislative assemblies or judicial roles in this and every land. <clears throat> o word made flesh, Hear our prayer. O God of perfect health and wellness and wholeness, in this time of pandemic, in the fear and uncertainty that surround it, we lift up to you all who care for the sick and the suffering. Pour out a special blessing upon our fellow, on all who follow your call to care for others in body, mind, or spirit, especially All nurses, doctors, police, firefighters, and Brad O and Brad S. Give them the gifts of courage and joy in their work and protect them from all adversity and harm. O word made flesh, hear our prayer. O word made flesh, this congregation gathers together as a people inspired by your first coming and looking for your coming again. Bless all its members with the gifts of hope, wisdom, and compassion. O word made flesh, hear our prayer. We pray also for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those who, re who have requested our prayers for healing and wholeness. We pray for Olivia, Becky, Carl, Kathy, Dave, Aaron, Esteban, Miroslava, and Tamara, for Glennis, for Geraldine, Umberto, Candida, and family, for Janice, Jim, and Janet, for Josh, Lisa B., Luke, Marge, and family, Mary R., Mary L., Marissa and family, Monty and Judy, Nan D., Nick, Olga, Michael, Sandra and Henrietta, Sarah, Michael E., 
Sharon, Sylvia P, Steve W and children, Tamara S, the Ruzika family, the Boer family, the Montgomery family, and the Sherman family. And we'd like to wish a very happy birthday for our dear, beautiful sister, Erin. And healing prayers for all of God's creatures experiencing the chaos that was 2020 and is leaking into 2021. And all those especially suffering from COVID. A special prayer, prayer to all those who miss being with family during the holiday season. May you all feel God's love for you in the coming years. Give to your people the gifts of comfort and healing, as well as a lively and abiding faith in your goodness throughout all circumstances. O word made flesh, hear our prayer. Lord Christ, in your passion and resurrection, you made death the gateway to new and eternal life. Pour that life upon all your servants departed this life, especially Marie R, Vern P, Joan B, Elda M, Carl M, Lisa M, Walt D, Wilma M, and Matthew S. and raise them to everlasting glory in your kingdom. O word made flesh, hear our prayer. And now, O Christ, in eager anticipation of your coming kingdom, we pray to you with hearts and voices for our needs and concerns. And we offer you thanks for the blessings of this life. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. My friends, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. A very good morning to one and all. Uh, I'd like to give you a word of explanation for why today's online worship looks somewhat different than what you have become used to. Uh, first of all, if you are new to our midst, uh, if you're not terribly familiar with St. Bartholomew's, I welcome you. My name is Andy. I am the priest and pastor at St. Bartholomew's, and I'm so delighted that you have tuned into this online worship and if you're somebody I don't yet know, please do reach out to the church. Um, 
There's all kinds of contact information on the website. Please call or email, and I would certainly love to get to know you better that way. Um, for those of you who are familiar, you know that just a little over two weeks ago, my wife and I welcomed a new baby boy into our family, and we're absolutely delighted. Uh, that is also the reason that this worship is a little bit different. Um, my wife has been encountering uh, a couple of extra postpartum challenges, uh, nothing terribly alarming or threatening, but uh, the need for care this weekend was a little bit higher, and so I needed to stay home and take care of that, and so I am providing some recorded worship elements from home, and you are, of course, seeing a mix uh, of that with our worship team in the sanctuary. So thank you for, uh, for receiving this worship a little bit different than what you're used to. What you're about to see in the next few minutes is I will be saying the service of Holy Communion at the kitchen table right behind you. Um, I will consecrate elements for myself here, and then, as has been true throughout Christmas season, consecrated elements of communion, the body of Christ, uh, are available at the church. Anyone wishing to receive them is more than welcome to come to one of our parking lot services, or if that's not available to you, please feel free to email or call me, um, and we will arrange another time to provide that sacrament for you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you've made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have made us you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our praise, sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where, with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Bartholomew, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, 
now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. <clears throat> Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, I invite you this day to commune with Christ and with your fellow faithful in your heart and to joyfully anticipate receiving this holy sacrament when it is available to you. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, 
You have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh, joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of the Word made flesh. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.